By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have a nice game against a new player I'm playing against, Steven. I'm playing with a budget blue deck. It's seen, it's seen some, uh, some action here on the channel already, but I'm playing against a really nice deck. I think that Steven in this matchup is the Tim, and he's playing with the Queen. At least I've called it the Queen because there are Sorcerer's Queens in this deck and uh, there's obviously a lot of synergy with the Sorcerer's Queen. So what I'm going to do in a moment, I have deck pictures of both decks, so I'm definitely going to discuss uh, Steven's deck, my deck really briefly, but I'm going to focus on Steven's deck here. Uh, if you want to go straight to the games, no worries, check the description below, click the timestamp and you can go and see the old school action straight away. Here I'm going to dive into both of these decks. Okay, so this is the deck of my opponent and what a beauty of a deck it is. So the nice thing here is, and this is again the reason why I love playing against new players, because new players usually do two things really well. They play with what they have and they play with what they love. And that's a killer combination. That's always going to bring a smile on your face when you're playing. So that's always something I'm trying to remember when I'm playing against these players. If you've been playing old school for longer, if you have a bigger collection, especially this whole tournament scene, then you have a tendency to always board in, for example, your Library of Alexandria, your Blue Power and all that stuff. The cool thing is to just kind of go back and think, okay, what cards do I really love? What cards do I really want to play? What cards are making me happy? And I think it's so cool to see uh, some cards here because we see, uh, for example, of course, the two Sorcerer's Queens, but we also see them working together with Protocol Sorcerer. You know, that's a really good combination. You tap your Sorcerer's Queen to make the creature of your opponent 0-2, and then you ping him down using your Protocol Sorcerers, using your Timmies. We also see Xenic Poltergeist, a fantastic card to kill Moxon, but also make a Soul Ring 1-1, kill it with the Timmy. You know, there's a lot possible. Another way of doing this is say, you know what, you've got uh, a book, a J JM Day Tome. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my Xenic Poltergeist, make it a 4-4. Gonna use my Sorcerer's Queen, make it an O2. Gonna kill it with my Timmies. Is that a little bit far-fetched? Yeah, it's a little bit far-fetched. Is it cool? Yes, it is amazing, super fantastic cool. That, that's the fact, you know, that's that's all there is to it. And uh, what you see as well, he's playing with Gabal Ghul, a really cool creature from the Arabian Nights. It's a 1-1. One, one. And every time a creature dies, it gets a plus one, plus one counter. So again, this is really nice in combination with the the timmies now obviously uh, this deck could use some underground seas but you know it's what i said you play with what you have so there are no underground seas in this deck yet also we see one sinkhole which is interesting i think you know if you're going to run a one-off why not do it of sinkhole you know you can get rid of a loa if you're facing one you can get rid of a mesa if it's if it's annoying you of course you can get rid of those factories a thing is i, I do notice that uh, uh steven despite being a new player already has four <laughs> mitra's factories so he has quickly found those and of course there are four hippies in here as well with the dark rituals also royal assassin beautiful card so this is your typical mid-range deck with some well not your typical but this i would call this a mid-range deck with some nice really tricks it's a trickster deck as well with those queens uh, with the scenic poltergeist with the timmies and also we see uh, icy manipulator royal assassin combo going on here so there's a lot to this deck it's not a one-dimensional brew uh, talking about a one-dimensional brew, let's take a look at my deck. And this is my budget blue brew. And despite the fact that it's not very expensive, it can be actually very, um, how do I say that? Definitely very aggressive, but it can be very good. And the reason that I came to make this deck is there was a tournament in Zwolle called the Often Troll Cup. And there was a, kind of a challenge for, you know, if you could make the most, you know, budget budget old school deck obviously you're allowed to play with reprints at that tournament and um you know that was a challenge and then if you would end highest with the with the best you know the best budget brew would, would win something i guess and in my opinion you know i thought the budget was actually pretty high up so i tried to build a deck that is less than 50 bucks so it's less than 50 euro uh, and this is it this is the result and as you can see the expensive thing here are the surrender befreeds because they have the original art they are italian version white bordered but they have the original art if you take the revised version you know that is uh much cheaper much more affordable so this deck can actually be even cheaper if you want to 
Um, but besides the fact that it's cheap, it's actually pretty consistent and it's pretty good. What you want to do, obviously, is just play very, very aggressively. For me, the time bombs are just like a lightning bolt. You know, I'm just gonna gonna hit as much as possible. For me, the Sunken City, I play it more as a sorcery, giving all my creatures plus one, plus one until end of turn. I usually don't pay the upkeep unless I'm pretty much into mid game because I don't need a lot of mana. The thing here is, the tactical thing here is like with every aggro deck, you're counting your steps. You're trying to, okay, what do I need to do now to come closer to finishing my opponent? Because you know, as soon as you're being dragged into the mid game, late game, you're probably not gonna win it. Um, I did make a little change if I look at this list because I've put two Control Magics main and I've taken the two Phantasmal Terrains out. For me, Control Magic having a casting cost of four is for me a late game card. So in this deck, it's just that, that final thing I, I want to use basically as an unsummon to just take the card of my opponent, the creature temporarily so that he doesn't have any blockers and just attack. I am not counting on actually stealing powerful creatures from my opponent and killing him with it. If that happens, great, but I don't count on it. Um, I think for me, the danger with this matchup against Steven is the Dark Rituals, because the Dark Rituals can give him a tempo swing, and then he can kind of get ahead on, on the on the board. You know, cards like uh, Royal Assassin are pretty deadly for my deck, and actually also the Sorcerer's Queen, the Timmies are pretty deadly, because he can shoot out eight of my creatures just with one Timmy. So... Um, yeah, there is actually a Timmy in the sideboard of this deck. You don't see that now, but after that tournament, I had the uh, a Timmy being signed by all players. So there's a Timmy in this sideboard as well. Anyway, enough about this blue deck. It's pretty one-dimensional. It's just attack, attack, attack. Um, let's take a look at the actual game. Let's go to game number one. Game number one, and uh, the player Steven is sitting on the left with his deck, The Queen. I'm sitting on the right with my blue aggro brew. And uh, yeah, let's see what's going to happen. Obviously, it would be nice if I can start on the play, have, having a very aggressive deck. And I'm curious to see what kind of games this will be. Obviously, I just want it to be over as, as quickly as possible because I'm playing aggro. Like I said in the introduction, the longer this game will take place, the more it's going to favor Steven. And let's see, it looks like Steven can start here, starts with a factory. And starting with a single basic island, probably going to pass here, or, well, am I going to find one of my 8 one ones? Yes, there's a Flying Man, so that means at least some pressure from my part. Probably going to attack here with the 2-2. Two -two. Going to go to 18. And actually, Mishra's factories are a bit of a handful for me as well. And now I'm attacking Steven, also going to 18, playing that Mind Bomb. And Mind Bomb is a card originally from the dark, and it reads, every each player gets three damage. And if you discard a card, one card will prevent one damage each. So if you discard one card, you only get two damage, etc. Now, obviously, we're both choosing just to take the damage. Look at this. This is huge. A Prodigal Sorcerer, a Timmy. And that is a problem for me. Can I find Lord of Atlantis? Because that would kind of help. Or am I going to play a Cyblast here on the Timmy to save my two 1-1s? One okay, so I'm finding a Lord of Atlantis. And dealing three damage here. So that means it's a bit hard to see there, but you can see the dice at the top. That means that Steven is at 13. Look at this, a second Timmy. This is becoming problematic for me because now he can shoot my uh, Lord of Atlantis. And he can even start shooting down my Mishra's Factory. For now, it's still a Summoning Sickness, so I have a turn to kind of try to get out of this mess. Attacking here is shooting down my Flying Man, obviously. Attacking with my 2-2. Two -two. They have Island Walk as well, so it's unblockable. He's going to 11 here, tapping for 3. Am I able to Psy Blast one of them? I think I have to. And that's exactly what I do, so I'm killing one of them. I do take two damage myself, going to 13 as well. Or, well, going to 13, because Steven's on 11 at the moment. Ooh, and there's one of those Gabal Ghouls from Arabian Nights. Beautiful creature. I believe it's a 1-1, one, one, and every time a creature dies, it gets plus 1, plus 1. But I have to hurry up here, because we're kind of going into that mid-game sec uh, section that I fear a little bit, because I think... Steven's going to run out some big creatures pretty soon. Playing a control magic on one of the Timmies. 
And this is actually interesting because um, what he did here is he chose to ping me. And for some reason, and this is a big mistake on my part, I forget to attack because I don't realize that my Merfolk of the Pearl Trident has Island Walk. So I don't know. I have to admit this whole tournament, I was a little bit sleepy because this is part of a tournament that we're playing. Uh, and I've just made tons of mistakes, I think. Playing another Mind Bomb. And we're both taking damage. So we can see Steven going to 8 here. I'm on 9. I should really attack with my Merfolk. I have Island Walk. Why am I not attacking? I'm really not seeing it. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I am just... This is a bit frustrating for me to look back at because I have Island Walk and I can just attack. He has an Island... Okay, pinging him for one. He's going to seven. I'm also taking damage here from my own Surrender Perfreed. I can attack at least through the air. Let me hope that I do that. Or did I turn into a pacifist? Which is not great. If you're playing aggro, being a pacifist is not the best quality to have. Animating it. Am I going to attack with all of it? Pinging the Timmy down first. And then attacking with everything. He's making 1-2-2. Two, two, gonna block. Probably gonna make it into a 3-3. Three, three. He can kill my Lord of Atlantis. He's actually gonna kill my factory. I guess we both don't see. And this, <laughs> this is pretty unique. That the... Mer I mean, Lord of Atlantis gives Island Walk. Please. Let's see. And now he has that disc that he can uh, use. Bam! And there goes everything. And remember, if I would have just attacked with my um, with my unblockable Merfolk of the Pearl Trident, Steven would have been dead by now. And playing two creatures. But now it looks like Steven is actually going to win this one. Animating both, attacking here. That means I have to block probably the Hippie with my Flying Man and my Merfolk Pearl Trident. Actually deciding to keep the Flying Man. There is a Sorcerer's Queen. His hand is empty now. I can get him to one, but can I kill him? There's a Flying Man. That's it. So that means, Steven, you've won this first game. Congratulations. And I, I must say, looking back at this, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, what was I thinking? Because Lord of Atlantis gives Island Walk. But, okay, um... At least it's a victory for Steven. 1-0. Let's go to game, well, first sideboard and then go to game number two. Game number two. So it's a victory for Steven. At least I get to start. Hopefully I can remember what Island Walk means. I hope. Let's see. Drawing a fresh seven. It looks like we're both keeping our hands. Oh, I'm not actually. Okay, I already took a mulligan. Okay, playing a basic line. Look at that flying man from Steven. So an early start for him. Paying two here. There is a Lord of Atlantis passing turn. And there is a Soul Ring. Oh, wow. Look at that speed. And this is actually what I want to do with my deck. What Steven is doing right now. And playing three. Also a Surrender Befreet. So we're kind of in the same boat here. And he's playing a Mishra's Factory as well. And again, I think that, you know, it's looking good for Steven because he wants to drag it into that mid game. Start deploying those, you know, um, Royal Assassins. I believe he's playing with a Mahamoti Jin as well in his deck. Ooh, this is important. Oh, but there is a Power Sync. Well timed Power Sync here from Steven because that. Control magic could have been a pretty big deal in this uh, board state. And let's see, taking some damage here, both of us. And there is that protocol sorcerer, the Timmy, coming in from my sideboard here. Because I saw some 1-1 one -one creatures on his side. And we're using the dice on our decks to remember the pinging of the Surrender Perfect. Because that's something that is easy to forget, but can have a big consequence on the match. Especially when you're playing close matches like this. Going to 16 here. Drawing my card for turn. So now my Protocol Sorcerer no longer has 
summoning sickness and playing a side blast on his surrender Paprik. Now I could ping out the flying man and then attack. Or with the sorcerer, sorry. Chooses not to block. That's interesting. Because he should have done just a chum block and I should have killed the flying man actually. So again, we're both making these little small mistakes. Let's see, is he going to attack with his Mishra's factories? And it looks like he is. He's attacking here with a 2-2. And I'm not blocking. Going to 12. Is he going to pump it to 3? Looks like he's not. And step. I'm killing the flying man, taking my turn. So he prefers to keep his factory as a blocker. Going to 11 here. And Steven's on 14. But it looks like I have the upper hand now, being able to swing in for 4. Going to 10, playing another Surrender Pafrit. Passing turn here, untapping those factories. He needs some beef. Control magic would really help right now, by the way. I don't know if he's playing it. I can't remember. But it would really help him. And pinging him for one end step. Going to nine. Taking two damage myself. Going to nine as well. But it's looking really good for me here. Swinging in for seven. Having that Timmy end step. Bringing him on one. And then being able to ping him again. And he's dead. And that's it, that's game, exactly. So I could say end step, ping you for one, he would go to one. Then it's my turn again, untap Protocol Sorcerer and kill him with a Timmy. This is the way I want to see things go. It's 1-1, one, one. that means we're going to get a game number three. 1-1 one, one, and game number three is a fact. Of course, we have Steven now on the play. And I'm on the draw. So let's see what Steven can do. And in the introduction, I said I'm a little bit afraid. Oh, look at that. He's even taken a mulligan. So things are looking good for me. Um, one of the problems. Oh, flying man. That's a good start again for Steven. And I have a flying man as well. Let's see if we are going to trade. Is he going to attack in the first place? He is. And I'm taking, am I taking damage or am I going to trade? We are trading. Also keep in mind that my opponent is playing with four Protocol Sorcerers, so... And I've boarded in one Timmy. Just playing an island, taking two damage here. He can pump it up, pumps it to three, going to 17. And those Mishra's factories, I mean, they are a problem for my deck. I have boomerangs, I have Phantasmal Terrains, but it's, it's not the best thing. Attacking here for four damage, going to 17. And look at that, I've missed a land drop here. Playing a single flying man. Oh, and this is going wrong quickly. He started with six. Hey, there's a dark ritual. And this is also a problem. Not right now, the biggest problem though. And there's a Timmy. That means he can shoot out my flying man. Wow, it looks like I'm going to lose this one. I'm on 13. I've got one flying man that's about to be pinged down. I'm looking at two Mishra's factories. Just playing another Merfolk, just to have a blocker to be able to soak up some of that damage. Obviously, he's going to ping something. He's going to ping my Flying Man. That makes sense. Attacking here for four. Probably going to chump one because it's going to die anyway. Taking two damage. Going to 11. Remember, the lower I go, the harder it is for me to play my deck because I also got Psy Blasts. I've got Surrender Perfreeds. I've got um, Mind Bomb. I've got so much stuff in my deck that's actually killing myself. And look at this, this is nice. It is nice to see a Sorcerer's Queen being cast here. And he has some mana left. And that means three damage for me, going to eight. And there's not much that I can do, at least casting another Lord of Atlantis, being able to block those um, Mishra's factories at least next turn. Obviously he's got the Timmy so he can ping me down. I'm on seven now. And remember, he has the Sorcerer's Queen. Oh, a Flyer, 3-4 Powerhouse. And I think this third game never was much of a game. Blocking here, pumping it up, actually making it an 0-2. We get to see some Sorcerer's Queen action, which is quite nice, you know, Steven. It's really cool you're playing this card. Making an 0-2. Of course, still getting the bonus from the other Merfolk. So then it's a 1-3. Control Magic is not going to help me. You have to discard pinging me again, going to six here. And, and my deck doesn't need a lot of mana, but it needs more mana than just two. 
attacking here, going at it for five. And making my blocker an 0-2 again. That means it dies. And actually, he could have. I think he could have won it already if he would have just attacked with everything. Yeah, also with the the other Mistress Factory that would have given him the game in combination with that Protocol Sorcerer being able to ping for one. <laughs> and here I am just, just playing my own Timmy. Now that I still can do that. And uh, I mean, this is pretty much it. There's nothing that can really save me. I'm tapped out. I've got a Timmy on the battlefield. I mean, what else can you really wish for? I'm on two life here. Just, uh, just kill me now, Steven. He's talking about wanting to do something, saying I want he sends a terror to my to my sorcerer. Look at it! Ah, it's screaming. It's going away. Bam! And this is it. A, a nice victory. That third game uh, really, really uh, wasn't much of a game. You see, my hand was full of counter spells, but I had to play out my little weenie creatures because I didn't want to die, so I couldn't counter as well. And um, Steven, congratulations, your um, first time here on the channel and you win immediately. That's pretty good, man. Uh, two win victory for you. Nice to see your deck. If you want to support the channel, support what we do here, what I do here, I should say, if you want to support Timmy Talks, you can do so by liking, subscribing, watching the video that you are already doing. So thank you very much for that. Sharing this content on your socials. And of course, you can also join our Patreon page because yes, we have a Patreon page. So if you can miss something, it would really be appreciated. As a matter of fact, let's go to the end scroll and let's check out the patrons of Timmy Talks. Ik het als fikker te somber gezien.